Hello, everyone. Welcome to another interview from Monero Space. You're on with Justin, myself, and Seth, uh, two Monero Space people from previous episodes. It's been a bit of time since you've had one of these, but we have a great guest on. We have uh, Mike on from Coin Cards. Coin Cards is a system similar to BitRefill, though they probably don't want us mentioning their competitor. <laughs> uh, but they do take Monero, unlike BitRefill, which is why they're they're on here. Uh, they're they're fans of Monero. They allow people to uh, purchase. Uh, gift cards using Monero. So, hey, Mike, welcome on. Would you like to introduce yourself and give a quick background on Coin Cards? Uh, yeah. So, my name is Mike Boltoff. I'm the CEO and founder of Coin Cards. Uh, Coin Cards has been around since 2014. Um, basically, started as a way to just use their Bitcoin. Uh, back in 2014, you know, nobody took Bitcoin. Um, so, there was a huge push from the Vancouver community where I'm based out of to kind of get people to um, go out and support businesses that would accept Bitcoin. But I was like, I, I want this farther reaching. So I started Coin Cards one weekend and it just kind of blew up from there. Um, so Coin Cards is a way to live off your cryptocurrencies. Um, we exchange crypto, you, you send us your crypto, we send you gift cards. Uh, we work with hundreds of different retailers across the United States and Canada. Yeah. What's that Bitcoin like? Is it like the white paper behind you? What is that? Yeah, that's the Bitcoin white paper. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. Do you have a Monero white paper on the other side of the wall somewhere? <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I, I work for a company that has one of those. And it was funny during an interview, I walked in and just saw in the hallway that had the Monero white paper on the wall. And I'm like, that's a that's that's a culture perk, you know, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Um but very cool. Um, so you said you coin cards has been in business since 2014 then how how is the process involved with plugging into different merchants is it something where most of them have existing referral type programs and so you just plug in their API or is there a sort of like extra process because you happen to touch crypto um no so there's no extra processes because of crypto um, most of them are kind of familiar with crypto but don't want to touch crypto um, so they're fine with us um, taking that step for them. Uh, when we started in 2014, it was very like, we didn't ask for permission. We didn't even talk to the merchants. We kind of just were like, we're going to buy some gift cards at the stores. and We're going to resell them. <laughs> like, and <laughs> you guys are going to take cryptocurrency whether you like it or not. Um, you know, very underground cypherpunk type, like just we're going to do it and too bad. Um, and as we grew, more and more merchants were like, hey, what are you guys doing? Cool. We like it. We don't want to touch crypto, but you can and you can still sell our stuff. So that's kind of where we're at now. Um, we've got partnerships in place. We talk to merchants all the time. Um, none of them are quite there with the crypto yet. But, you know, there's a lot of a lot of discussions between them or in, behind the scenes kind of thinking about how it's going to play out in the future. and. You know, one of the good things is that we can actually show them the volumes that we do. Um, and when they're partnered with us, they can kind of see how big crypto is getting and how big of a chunk that they could potentially have if they actually accepted it directly. So, you know, my goal always as this company has grown, my goal is always to make myself obsolete. Like I just I don't want to exist. I don't think coin cards actually needs to exist if the merchants themselves just take cryptocurrency. Yeah, I was curious about that um, because I think the end goal for a lot of people is just to be able to spend directly at the merchants that they like. Just yeah. whip out a Monero wallet, pay for whatever you're wanting to buy and move on. And adding in gift cards does add some complexity, but um, it's I mean, it's really easy through your system. But I was curious, like, is that something when you're talking to merchants that you're prompting them like, hey, you could accept this directly. This is how I'm doing it. Um, if you want to, I'll keep selling gift cards, but this is the way that you could do it yourself. Is that something, yeah. some conversation that comes up? I mean, it's, yeah, it's I, counter I, to your business interests, <laughs> but I, I, definitely try, I definitely try and get that conversation started. Like I said, most of them are just kind of like, well, we're not there yet. We don't want to touch it. Our, our legal guys are scared and you know, all this stuff. So, uh, for now it's, it is kind of status quo, but you know, like I said, at the end of the day, I don't want to exist. I want, you know, everybody to be using crypto and Monero and Bitcoin and just, direct peer-to-peer -peer transactions and I can retire somewhere. <laughs> did you launch just in Canada or did you also launch in the US? Um, so we launched in Canada in 2014 and then in 2019 we launched into the States. 
All right, very cool. We'll get to like when Europe later, because I know that's all. There, there are quite a few members of the Monero community in Europe, so they're they're looking for this. But we we can touch on that later. Um, when did you start taking Monero, and then why? Like, why did you just d- decide to start taking Monero? Um, so Monero was available on BTC Pay. I don't know. I'm going to say at least a year and a half ago, um, and we took it right away. We were like, cool. You know, we were talking to the developers as they were developing the support for uh, Monero. And I was just like, okay, I want to use this. I want to use this as soon as it's in. Boom, done. And we we're probably the first ones to start accepting Monero through BTC Pay. Yeah, I think I'm trying to remember, but I think that's actually how I learned about coin cards. Was I think you messaged me about a BTC Pay server issue yeah. you having with Monero. Yeah, and I kind of that was under the code and tried to figure out what was going on there because I'd never. Yeah, seen that was when the whole um, when the blocks were falling behind because of that spam attack. Yeah, that was during yeah. our like six month long network attack. Yep. Yeah, and we kept having to like bump versions every couple of days. Yeah, that was fun. It was, it was yeah. nice to get into maintaining a different project. It's been cool yeah. to keep that up. But yeah, that was how I I learned about you guys. I'd never heard of y'all before that, but glad that yeah. glad that that network attack at least led to something good. <laughs> When you when you wanted to add Monero, was it just because it was another coin that happened to be supported in BTC Pay, or were you especially interested because it was Monero? Um, I'd say because it was Monero. I think Monero has kind of always been one of those things that I've been following. Um, I mean, I'm a pretty private person. I like privacy. I think Monero has some features that Bitcoin should eventually kind of bring into the loop or strive to achieve that Monero already has. Um, I know all the Bitcoin maxis, if anybody sees it, they're going to be like, no, oh, this guy, F him. <laughs> but I mean, just some people need privacy and some people depend on that, that layer of privacy to be able to live. And, you know, Monero has that in place right now where Bitcoin really just doesn't. Um, there is the Lightning Network, which, uh, um, but Monero has it built in and Monero is ready to go right now. Monero is cheap. Um, you know, it's just, it was one of those things that we pushed for because we knew that there was a community that needed private transactions. Um, we knew that there, there was going to be usage and our usage over the last couple months of Monero has just skyrocketed. So, I mean, there's a use case for that and gift cards inherently are private in themselves as well. Like if you go to the store and you're using a gift card, they don't ask you for your name. They don't ask you for your wallet or your ID. It just, so you're trading your Monero for something else that can be used in store that is inherently private. So, I mean, it's just, it's a flow through KYC free private instrument and it's beautiful. Yeah. That was the other really nice thing I noticed when I finally checked out the service for myself, bought a few gift cards. Um, and it's nice that it's just name and email address. As far as I can remember, that was all that was required, which yeah. I feel like even when you're buying something digitally, it seems like most people at least ask for address and phone number and, all this mess of being able to pay with Monero to keep my financial privacy and then just give name and email was a really nice way to be able to spend at merchants that wouldn't otherwise accept Monero. Yeah, exactly. It also just saves time from having to type out your <laughs> yeah. It's just a pain. <laughs> <laughs> so you briefly uh, mentioned um, that you've seen Monero usage go up quite a bit in the past few months. I'm kind of curious, like since you've integrated it, what's that? What's that adoption been like for you? Was it something that just took off right away and that you've just seen recent growth, w- growth with or something that's kind of been a slow, um, slow growth? I, th- I think like with anything, it takes time to grow something. So I think we were about 2% usage of our total usage for the last probably year. Um, and then something happened and everybody's just like, hey, these guys actually take Monero. <laughs> Let's start using them. Um, and then we grew to like, usage, 6%. I think last month was almost 11%. So 11% of our volume right now is Monero. And that's, that's pretty good. I mean, considering Bitcoin is only 48%. um, It's taking a a pretty good chunk of the market. Yeah, it's really cool to see that, that growing rapidly. Um, Trying to keep an eye on the stats of like how Monero usage has been has been doing and it's cool to hear from a merchant who's actually accepting it daily kind of how yeah. that how that adoption curve has been going for you um has it been hard to maintain accepting monero has it been something that's been difficult over the the time that you've been using it just no it i think i think the only issue that i had was that that attack um but i mean we were pretty good with 
being able to uh, upload new versions of the software pretty quickly. Um, and then we got that ban list in there, and then we were good from there. Um, yeah. It's so great to hear to be like, oh, it wasn't too hard. We just had to update the program every like other day and you know, have to keep <laughs> manually importing lists. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome to hear. You guys are really, uh, really the cypherpunk types over there. <laughs> if that doesn't put you off. Um, but luckily, this, the network seems to have been more stable since. So those things seem to be working. Um, did, you know, switching topics here a little bit, have you ever received tainted coins? What does your process look like? Someone sends you Bitcoin or Monero and you probably sell them somewhere, I assume, to pay for the gift cards. So has, have you ever gotten sketchy Bitcoin that way? Um, I mean, so we have a couple processes in place, a uh, couple limitations. So in the United States, we're only legally allowed to take two grand a day per customer. Um, we do notice some people try and get around that, but we've got ways of basically locking it down. Like, like anything, if there's a rule in place, people are going to try and get around it. And we don't entirely love the rules, but we kind of have to follow them so that we're not like holding a big flag that says like IRS, come audit us, come check us out. You know what I mean? Like, so I've never seen any coins that I think have gotten past that point where they were, where you could tell, like, we're pretty good at telling right away when coins are coming in that are bad. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to reveal all of our secrets of how it's done because I don't want people to start circumventing it, but we have pretty good um, systems in place that just kind of trap those orders and we just send them back. All right. Yeah, sounds cool. Yeah. Um, why is privacy important to you? Um, you know, you said you're I, a private person. What, what, what makes that appealing to you? I just, I think it's important. I think, you know, everybody deserves pirate, or, no, privacy. <laughs> privacy. Piracy too. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> Freudian slip there. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Um, I don't know. I, I just, privacy is important. I think corporations have been taking away privacy for years. Um, you know, obviously the big tech companies, Google, Amazon, um, Facebook, Twitter. It just, I think it's going to, the unfortunate thing is that people seem to be giving up their privacy for convenience. And I don't think many people get how bad that is and how bad it's going to get in the future. Um, I mean, you look at China, like, look how invasive they are with a lot of their privacy, right? Like they're locked down. You can't use parts of the internet. You can't walk through certain neighborhoods without getting your face scanned and, you know, social credit scores and all this stuff. Like this is stuff that North America will head towards if we don't actually try and, um, try and take back our privacy. That's what I think anyways. I don't know. Maybe I have a tinfoil hat on and I'm crazy, but no, I think that's. I think it's really important too that being able to achieve privacy is relatively easy. I think that's a, a yeah. reason a lot of people give it up is because they see that uh, if I just give up all my KYC info, it's a lot easier to buy and sell Bitcoin. Or like, oh, if I just give up all my info to Amazon, it's just a lot easier to handle these things. Um, and so services like Coin Cards or product projects like Monero that make it easier for you to do things in a private manner, I think are are really valuable, and that helps. I think that helps wake some people up when they go like, why don't I have to give up like every piece of identifying information ever to buy a gift card? <laughs> like yeah. I think people are so accustomed to this, this world where like you have to give up everything you own to, to prove that you are a human before you can buy something or get a service. So something that's a little bit more conscious of privacy, um, I think is, is really nice to see. Yeah. Do you have any, words of advice or suggestions to anyone else who wants to potentially take Monero? What, what would you tell them if, if they're like, hey, I want to accept Monero? Would it be just an emphatic yes? Or would it be like, you know, yes, but A, B, and C? No, I think Monero is great. Um, I don't see any issues with taking it. Um, BTC Pay Server is pretty easy to take it. Um, you can set up a shop through, I think, like WordPress, Magenta, few other different things, maybe even Shopify. I, I know Shopify was kind of iffy. They started banning a few stores, but 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty easy. Um, it just flows through, I think, the Monero, like, Monero Core wallet, the GUI wallet. You just set up a wallet in there, export it into BTC Pay, and you're ready to go. Um, I mean, if you're a merchant with a retail location, you don't even need that. You just throw in, you know, a Monero wallet into your phone and just start taking it. Well, why not? We keep asking that question all the time. <laughs> That's been the question for like eight years for me. Why not? <laughs> I'm glad you're part of the movement to get people to, uh, to actually start doing that. And then you also provide the rails such that they don't want to do it directly. We can easily get the gift card. I know um, like Mastery and Monero, for example, is a book that is published on Amazon. So you have to buy it on Amazon. Um, and so they don't take Monero, right? <laughs> um, but you could buy the coin cards, Amazon gift card now with Monero and then use that to buy the book. And so yeah, that's, I, that's something that is, I'm aware of several people that have de definitely done that <laughs> um, because they want to, you know, give back or whatever or get a physical copy, but they don't want to. Why isn't the author just offering it? It's also well, offered for free as a PDF. Oh, okay. but if people want a physical copy, then it's, um, okay. then it's through Amazon. I guess publishing through them was easier. I'm not really sure. Hmm. The, yeah. They the print the thing. book for us. We don't, we don't have a big machine that prints those things. Oh, they print the actual <laughs> book. Okay. Yeah. So you could just buy a bunch of them and then like resell them or ship them. Um, a few people have showed interest, but it's easier to buy just the gift card through you, honestly. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. Awesome. What, what are your future plans mm -hmm. for coin cards? Um, so we want to continue with uh, getting more merchants on board. That's definitely one of our biggest ones. Um, Europe, eventually. Um, and I mean, the issue with Europe is a banking issue. Um, you know, it was always an issue in Canada. It's been an issue in the United States, too. But it's a hell of a lot harder in Europe. Um, so as soon as we get a bank that will work with us, we can launch in Europe. Uh, so if anybody knows any crypto-friendly banks in Europe that will take Canadians, um, uh, you know, shoot us a message and we'll get going until then. Uh, it's kind of just whenever anybody asks, it's soon. Is that something that is more difficult specifically because you're working with cryptocurrency, do you think, or just cause you're not a European citizen? Um, I think the crypto aspect of it just like shoots it down to maybe like a handful of players and then they want you to open up shop in their country to be able to play in their country. So we've talked to a few different banks and it's always kind of just been like, well, you're not a citizen of ours and we want you to be a citizen of ours to, so, but then you get into like the bigger countries like the UK and, you know, Spain and France and they're like, oh no, your cryptocurrency bad. We don't want it. So. Yeah, I've heard some pretty Hopefully. horror stories about European bank accounts with, with crypto, frankly. <laughs> Yeah, so we're looking at ways to get to Europe, but it's just not there yet. What about the rest of the Americas? I know you said you'd like coming soon in Mexico and other places. Or is, is that another banking challenge or is that something else? That would be another banking challenge as well. Um, so we, we do have partners in place. We have gift cards ready to go in those countries. It's just getting accounts. Um, and a big part of that is we need the local currency accounts so that we can transact in those local currencies just because our margins are so low that we actually have to, anytime we convert a currency, we're gonna be losing money. Um, so say if like we dealt with Europeans, but we dealt some Canadian dollars, our Canadian dollars crap, and we would just lose money on the exchange. So yeah, it's it's a big whole thing that we're trying to work around. Awesome. Do you have any questions for the Monero community? Have you ever interacted, you know, on any of the IRC channels or, or Matrix channels or on Reddit uh, or anything? I'm on a couple Telegram chats. I'm on Twitter. Um, you know, I think my name's on there at Oltoff on Twitter. You can also at Coin Cards. We're pretty uh, pretty prolific with, you know, posting Monero stuff. Um, yeah. No. I mean, I'm. I'm kind of just always in the telegram and I'm just kind of lurking and watching what people are saying. And just, I don't know. 
we're hosting some of the Twitter spaces now. I don't know if you've used those before. It's like a clubhouse type room. Yeah. So you should definitely join those if you see them. Yeah, I definitely. I've, I've jumped in a couple. Uh, I haven't actually spoken in any. I've just, I, there was one yesterday where it was just like a bunch of Bitcoin maximalists and they were just going off about the whole Elon thing. And I was just like, oh man, like, what did you think this guy was going to do? <laughs> like, you know, everybody loves Elon, but then it's just, you, I don't know, you put up your, your heroes on a pedestal and then they crush you and you just get so mad. And Especially when funny. he's been doing this for so long too. I mean, he's done it with Doge. He's done it with his own stock. Like he's always been someone who kind of trolls and messes yeah. with the price of things. And yeah. Yeah. And then they're going off about how they hate every other coin because they're all useless. And uh, just oh, man. fun. So you, you wouldn't put yourself <laughs> in the same camp where everything is totally useless except Bitcoin. No, I mean, Bitcoin is king to me. I, I'm going to say that because it is. Dogecoin is a, a close, <laughs> close to my heart. It's always been there. Um, but I mean, I was in the Dogecoin like 2016, 2015 or something like the back when it was a stable coin, right? Like, um, <laughs> yeah. And then Monero, I think Monero is awesome for privacy. And I, I wish more people besides myself would accept it so that I could use it. <laughs> When did you first learn about Monero? Oh, damn. That's probably a long time ago. I mean, how old is Monero now? 2014. Yeah, so probably around then. Like, I've, I've been in the space since about 2013. Um, and we used to have a, a space in Vancouver. Actually, it's still there. It's called D-Control. Um, and we used to hang out there every week and we'd have different discussions about different cryptocurrencies and different projects coming up. So, you know, I'm sure I probably learned about Monero from there. Yeah. So probably around 2014, 2015, I would imagine. Awesome. Um, Seth, do you have any other questions? Um... I don't think so. I mean, if you wanted to, you can jump into a little bit about how you got into the space. I know that's something a lot of people like to hear from from people who ended up starting businesses. Um, but that's totally up to you if you're comfortable. Yeah, sure. Um, so I I got into the space actually. Um, I went to a lunch and learn that was at like a coding camp, and there was a guy there, and he was explaining Bitcoin, and he he was pretty eccentric. He had like a a coinye. I don't know if you remember coinye coin. It was like a ripoff of Kanye. And it got sued at some point. Anyways, he had a t-shirt of that on. And he was just going on about how Bitcoin was awesome. Um, and at the time, I had another business that I was accepting Bitcoin in, but I was using BitPay. And I was just like, okay, I, you know, in my mindset, I was like, if people want to use this cryptocurrency stuff, as long as I get Canadian dollars, I don't care, right? I probably had thousands of Bitcoin transacted that just like are way gone, right? Anyway, so I, I was listening to this guy and I was like, oh man, this is this is awesome. Like, why haven't I been keeping this? So I was like, okay, I'm going to keep a couple Bitcoin. I'm going to go home, turn off BitPay. I'm just going to keep a couple Bitcoin. And he's like, you know, come down, check out our space. Um, and then that's kind of where it ended up. Um, met a whole bunch of Bitcoiners in 2013, 2014. And they were all weird like me, so we got along great. Um, yeah, and it's it's been rocking that space ever since. And uh, yeah, we had lots of great conversations down there, and a lot of a lot of good thoughts on cryptocurrencies. And so you actually started accepting Bitcoin for payments before you really like before you kind of fell down the rabbit hole. Yeah, um, <laughs> like I said, I had like a, a hosting business that never really took off but i had a few customers who wanted to pay in bitcoin because they were playing with it and then so i i signed up for bitpay and i was like okay cool you know you can pay in your your crazy money and uh, you know i'll get canadian dollars cool you know if i knew what i knew back or what if i knew now what i knew back ah whatever if i knew it was going to blow up then i would have taken it out of time and just i, I mean that's everybody's story right yeah. If I only knew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone has uh, doesn't have a, a piece of that in their their history coming into the space. Yeah. 
Or if they don't, I'm concerned, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've always made perfect decisions from the moment I learned about them. <laughs> Something you hope to never hear. Yeah. That's the guy who's been in there for like two weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we get a lot of hot. I'm a mod of the cryptocurrency subreddit, so we get a lot of like hot personalities coming around, being like, "Oh yeah, I turned my ten dollar Doge investment into fifteen grand." You know, <laughs> you get a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always fun. Everybody can brag in the middle of a bull run, right? Give yeah. it another couple of days of twenty percent drops, and let's see who's still around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the people before they've learned what unrealized profits are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looking at their Coinbase wallet and feeling like a millionaire. Yeah. Well, Mike, um, is there anything else you want to leave us with? Anything you wanted to say to the Monero community um, before we, we wrap this up here? Uh, yeah. So I just I want to thank the Monero community for all the support. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk, um, you know, a lot of people messaging us and being like, thank you for taking Monero. Um, I've kind of been lurking in a lot of the subreddits in the Telegram. A lot of people are starting to mention us, say, hey, go use coin cards. So that's great. Um, you know, even on our competitors' uh, subreddits, they're saying, well, why is, it, why is it you guys can't take Monero, but coin cards can? <laughs> so that's always good to hear. But I, obviously, I'd prefer people just continue to use us. <laughs> But yeah, um, just want to say thank you to the community for supporting us, and uh, thanks to Seth for helping out with the with the node and keeping that up and running. And yeah, yeah, thanks awesome. for accepting Monero early on. I mean, it's it's great to see, and hopefully more people will learn from your example that it's it's relatively easy as long as there's not a network attack ongoing. <laughs> um. Yeah, and if anybody ever wants to reach out, um, I'm on the BTC Pay chat or on Twitter. And I can try and help you accept Monero um, as long as you somewhat know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Someone shows up. What is this server? <laughs> yeah, I don't have hours to spend, but you know, if it's a good half hour, I can I can walk you through it. All right. Thanks so much, Mike, for joining us. Uh, his website is coincards.com. Is there any other way you want to push people to reach coin cards uh, or learn more? Just Twitter um, at coincards. Yeah. Excellent. Um, well, yeah, we'll keep this one nice and short and sweet, but it, it was very good. It, you know, we're really happy that you have welcomed Monero with open arms, that you see that there's obvious utility in wanting to pay for it and accept it. And so I think that, we'll, you know, you'll continue to see a lot of Monero community to support for people who want to buy things more privately. It's a great option to convert it to gift cards and use on these platforms, um, you know, far easier than many other options. So yeah, we, we really appreciate your support, Mike. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. All right. We'll catch someone in the future episode. Take care.